Yeah. Okay, so I have something to share with you. Uh, it won't, I, don't, I don't know, I don't think I take the, the whole hour, the, the entire hour. So just, just um, uh, if, is that okay? Yeah. Okay, okay jo just one comment. If yeah. we have some time and you're interested, uh, I went through the Julia Silgi uh, mm -hmm. uh, episode, uh, her, her blog episode on tidy models on the use of tidy models for statistical inference. Okay, mm -hmm. um, most of the time it's not mentioned, but there's a package called infer, mm -hmm. I-N-F-E-R, infer, mm -hmm. that gives you the tools to do statistical inference like we're doing with base R. So mm -hmm. if we have some time, maybe we can go about it. You know, I already, you know, uh, mark down the, the, the whole blog. Okay. So it, it will be kind of interesting, you know, and see more or less the comments that she's, she's doing. Yeah, she, she's very good, she's very good. <laughs> I like her. Yeah, 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 I agree. Agree. Uh, okay, so I start and then uh, you continue. Okay, where are we? Okay, so I've taken this um, example from a course um, I did on edX, which uh, turns out to be very interesting and appropriate for this uh, chapter. Uh, then the, the, there is the example for the replications with the cancer data in the chapter. This is extra. Okay, and uh, it's very interesting because uh, it explains how to calculate the things. Okay, so this is from Harvard Biomedical Data Science Open Online Training from Professor Rafael Pizzarri, which is great. And uh, I'm going to paste this um, part of the, the notes on the previous one. So you find the uh, at the bottom of the, uh, the chapter, of the note chapter. Here are some uh, uh, links to this example. So I base my, uh, the, the, the all, all these things on this, um, uh, on this example. Uh, data are from Bioconductor. So I don't know if you know about Bioconductor. Uh, it's like CRAN, so it releases uh, some packages with data, with function, but for biostatistics. Okay, so there's genes, uh, data, lots of things. Uh, it's an immense world to dive in. All right, okay, so this is the, uh, the library that needed for, for making this example. Um, and the data set is uh, this one here. So you need to install genomics class uh, and gen, gen, gene filter for, for a specific function that we talk about later. So, First, we load the library with the data, the genes data. Uh, and uh, the last library that we need is the Q-value because uh, it's a, a nice library used for making a Q-value. So we then compare two results in the, in the two ways. Okay, if, if we do list, um, we see that inside this data, because these are gene data, so are quite uh, experimental uh, through a uh, uh, data set. So it's quite uh, large and uh, it's composed of three uh, different data sets that are connected to each other. So there's sample info, gene expression and gene annotation. Okay, so 
we might want to, for a minute, just jump into R to see what we are talking about. So then it's slightly clearer uh, what's happening. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't take um, much time to load uh, the things once you have installed them. Uh, the, 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 the most of the time it takes is uh, for installing the packages, but then it doesn't take much longer. Okay, so these are uh, what's inside uh, the data set, as I said. And um, so what we see is, for example, if we see um, the sample info, uh, here there is a group, okay? This column group, it's basically what we um, link uh, for uh, our uh, hypothesis. So number one means uh, uh, the alternative hypothesis, number zero means the new hypothesis. So it's a, it's a vector containing uh, zero and ones, uh, indicating uh, what part of the new hypothesis is within the set and what, are, uh, what is the other part uh, for, for the alternative hypothesis. So we basically set uh, uh, this as a, a factor uh, and uh, call it new hypothesis. So in a way that we have uh, uh, a vector made of one and zeros for saying that this part of the data set uh, will be um, one is the new hypothesis and and one is the alternative hypothesis. Okay. So this is the what's uh, what is in in the sample info uh, data set. So we take the the group vector with one and zeros, and we set a new hypothesis vector made of zero and ones. Okay. Now uh, what we are interested in is um, this gene expression data set, which is made of 8,793 uh, 8, observations, 24 columns. Okay, so here is uh, like the raw names are the specifications of the different type of genes. These are all files containing the quantity of this type of gene inside um, this cell. Okay, there is a cell that is uh, ending with uh, 508, another cell ending in with 530, another one with 517. So they are all cells. Okay, and inside its cell, there is some uh, a list of genes. Okay, these genes are in some quantities. So, for example, this type of gene is six point fifty four. Not talking about the units at the moment. Uh, this other one is seven point fifty four, and so on and so forth. So this is uh, the dimension of this data set is this amount. So very, very, so lots of observations. So the, uh, we have a few compared to the number of observation, we have just a few predictors. Okay, this is the case. Okay. Okay, now uh, this is a matrix particular matrix that can be treated as a data frame. So you can easily uh, change the, the class to a data frame and uh, manipulate this data set as you like. So for example, 
I have put the, the row names as a colon with this row names to colon, name it Jean. So now I have the, the row names within a colon in the data set with the row names to colon. And then I counted the, the type of gene that obviously just a, a double check. They, they must be all different, but just a double check, you sort it and you see that they are all uh, unique. Okay. Okay. Now, now what's happened? Let's see if we can go back to the presentation. What's happened? What we do is we want to compare, check, uh, look at these genes to see if they, they mean is different. So if they differ in mean. So we do a massive row test. Okay. So let, let's imagine that we are uh, in this situation. Uh, in, in this situation here, okay? So we have a certain number, we have 24 different type of cells. We want to calculate the mean of this uh, row, okay? Uh, for, for, uh, to see if there's differences, okay? And so we do a row t-test using, um, uh, this uh, this function row t tests and this is from the uh, the package uh, gene filter so instead of there is something in the chat okay yeah um, I speed up a bit <laughs> sorry uh, it's just an introduction that it's a bit like um, okay, so as you can see, uh, what is it? This row test avoids you to making a four because you, you need to make a list of, of, of T tests for each element, for each new hypothesis you've got, okay? So that's why we have divided the data set in two with half new hypothesis and half alternative hypothesis because we are comparing a couple of, uh, so two genes, two genes, they mean different. Okay, so we do a row test, a row T test within the values. Okay, so here, uh, instead of uh, in, the, in the book, for example, if we see, uh, if we go back here, in the book uh, shows you, uh, lab resampling approach this is the part that we uh, we missed you know the, the, the last part so when you do the t-test you should do the t-test the for for each element okay so then when you have more than than one element what you need to do it's a four okay now what we do is using the raw t-test Okay, and this releases, as you can see, the difference in mean within the row, and then, okay, and uh, the p-value in the statistics for all the genes. Now I have just, uh, you know, uh, selected uh, the, the initial part. And here I've made a little comparison for you to, to see what changes. Because our vector, this, this row test uh, function requires you to specify 
a, a vector of factors uh, of the same length of the observation. So the number of hypotheses that you are going to make. Okay, so in, in our case, uh, our vector is the null hypothesis vector, the one that we have just created. Okay, made of, uh, uh, it's, it's the one from sample info, no? I mean, zero and one. If, if you would like to understand how, what are the zeros and what are the, the one, you might, uh, want to look at this uh, first two line of code, but uh, so it 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 is required that in the, in the case you want the mean difference that you are specifying zero and one as the new hypothesis vector because if you change with different values such as um, characters even if they again factors but they just characters the the values changes um, a lot so the analysis com it's a completely different analysis so hypothesis that you are making a new hypothesis which says my value should be equals to a or otherwise if it's not a will be b so different values okay your result uh, would be completely different so you now are comparing the means the difference in means so your vector your factor vector should be should be composed of zero and ones okay so um the result of this uh the correct t test which is this one with the new hypothesis and zero and ones result with a uh, thousand three hundred and eighty three genes i don't know if you remember that we have a quite long list no so we have restricted the result to a thousand three hundred and eighty three genes which have p-values lower than 5%. Okay, this way. So in row test, gene expression, new hypothesis, and this is what goes inside the row test function. And then doing the sum of the result, specifying the p-values. So this column here, we sum all the number of p-values which are less than 5%. So the result is 1,383, so quite lower. Then if we consider the proportion, we found a mean of 16% of the genes which are lower than 5%, okay? So this is um, something to think about because, you know, originally, uh, now I forgot uh, how many, I need to go back. Um, yeah, but so, I believe it were 8,700. Uh, there it is, okay, 8,000, so 8,700, no, uh, 8,700. So now, only 16% is it's within. So we are going to reject a large amount of genes. So we need to check that if it's correct or not. And this might, might not be correct because um, it's a quite large data set. So we might need to consider the family wise error rate, which says what is the probability to make at least one type one error, so a false rejection. So I, um, and if, if we do a quick check uh, using the, the formula, so considering the, the, the probability with a cutoff of 5% of making at least one type one error, 
the, the result probability is one. So it's for sure that we, okay. So this is not what we want. So we want a value uh, in, within zero and one. Okay, so a bit lower. Uh, because that that would be that would give us the the, the chance to uh, select just the right ones and not not rejecting uh, genes that may be uh, useful good for us so that, that that we're going to use so um, to do this uh, th there is the correction no so the bonferroni correction and um, uh, if we set the, the formula for calculating the probability, one minus one minus um, alpha power to the number of observations, uh, and we put this uh, threshold, this 5% as, uh, as a variable that we don't know, um, and we want to extrapolate, setting this um, probability to 5%. So we want to set that we will be able to find, uh, to make at least one type error 5% of the times, no more, no less, okay? To do that, we set the, the probability equals to 5%, and then we calculate the, the, the K value back, if we reverse this formula, we found that uh, our new cutoff, it's quite lower than our alpha 5%. Now is zero, nearly zero, okay? So this still might be not that correct. So there is a Bonferroni correction, which will be applied inside the formula. Uh, of the family-wise error rate. That's why it said that the Bonferroni, it's a method for correction the, for the, the family-wise error rate. So we use the Bonferroni correction inside the probability for, find, for, um, for setting the cutoff. And what we found, it's a new cutoff, which is slightly lower than 5%. Now it's 4.8%. Instead of five, we have a cutoff, a new alpha, which is 4.8. And this is set uh, special. This is just for this data set because M is the number of, of different genes, of unique genes. So we have 8,700 8, genes, let's say that. So our new cutoff is 4.8% instead of five. If we do the sum of our p-value that we have just calculated here with the row test, and we check now for the number of these p-values underneath this, um, uh, the Bonferroni correction, we found that 10 genes, this is not, uh, okay, but let, let's go forward. Uh, we found if, if we set the, the new alpha just to this type of Bonferroni correction, we found that 10 genes, so the number of hypotheses with a p-value lower than, uh, than 5% is now 10. And the, the, the proportion is a bit different. So now it's no point, no, no, one. Have you got any questions or something? So any additions, any some, something to, okay. Because now here, this is the probability to making at least one type one error with the, with the correction, okay? And we have set this uh, 
probability to be lower than 5%. It's a bit tricky, you know, because it's always 5%. Yeah, what, what the Bonferroni correction is doing is instead of uh, applying the alpha without considering the sample size, it inserts the sample size, which is M, really the number of observations that you yeah. have in your previous yeah. calculation. So what That's it's doing is, okay, that alpha, instead of you know disregarding the sample size, okay, now we're inserting uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a denominator, okay, yeah. the number of sample size. So bigger sample size, that number is going to go lower, of course. Uh, okay? Lower, yeah. Because with a sample, it, it, with a large sample size, you get a more probable, uh, you know, uh, uh, probability of error in your type one, uh, you know, type one specific, specifically than, you know, a smaller. So now you account for that sample size now. Okay. Uh... Okay, it's just that if I do zero uh, five percent divided eighty, uh, if if I do uh, where is it? Let's go back here. Okay, if I do uh, where is it? Exactly here. Okay, if I do this, I need to, to run this bit, otherwise. Okay, now it should work. So this is my M. Let's go back here. If I do 5% divided by M, as I said, the result is 0 0.00005. Okay, not 5%, not 4.8%, neither. So it, it's quite lower. So what I'm going to use here, it's a value which is very small because of my large uh, data set. And um, so the proportion of the values which have a p-value lower then this very small, small threshold is as well, as, as well very small, near zero, okay? So now there is a, a sort of trade-off to be, to, to balance, to find a certain uh, value. So there is the, the default discovery error rate that um, can be used, and this is, uh, uh, Federica, just one comment. Uh, yeah. Depending on the field that you are doing your statistical analysis, uh, that alpha is going to vary. Okay. And for example, in social sciences, it's very common to have that 5% as an alpha. Okay. Because of the mm -hmm. variability of, of, of your data. If you're doing surveys, for example, or even uh, econometrics. Uh, five percent is, is is an acceptable, you know, standard for your type one error. In this case, that you're talking about genes, okay, uh, you know, biostatistics and all that, is usually recommended to have a, a much lower, uh, you know, alpha, okay, yeah. because yeah. of the of the massive, uh, you know, of, of the massive sample size. That that's what I, that, that that's why it's happening. It's usually, in social science uh, data you have smaller, uh, smaller observations. So think about a survey, okay? Think about a survey of maybe two, three, two, 300, uh, you know, uh, 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 persons, okay, individuals. That's a small data set. So your alpha is not going to be that, you know, impacted 
because of the number of observations. But you have, but if you have millions and millions and millions and millions of observations, then that alpha five percent is not adequate. Okay, you'll have to, okay. you, know, you have to move it, M move it to a more uh, lo lower threshold to get more significant. Oh, okay, so now we use this. Um, we want to uh, adjust this this value. And we use the, the, the default discovery rate. Okay, so this is uh, um, it's referring to a discovery driven project experiment. So we are driving our experiment to where we want, basically, because uh, we are setting our uh, parameters to our experiment, basically. So um, as, as you know, uh, when, when we um, have this um, our table no? uh, with the defaults uh, positive, defaults negative, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. We have this V, this R. Uh, so all these values are very important. It are the values that we are using for um, making this um, adjustment. Okay, so we want to deal with this Q value, uh, which is the proportion uh, of the uh, false uh, positive on the number of rejections, on all the number of rejections. So uh, to, to deal with this new Q value, this is not uh, that we are changing a P value, but we are setting, uh, we are instead of calculating the P values and checking them against um, a threshold of 5% or a very lower, lower, lower value uh, than, than the 5%, we are now making a modification to the p-value, the, to the calculation of the p-value. So we are, one, we are searching for a p-adjusted, okay? And this will release a q-value. So now, we have uh, we will find a list of q values which are not p values but are similar they they are set differently and then we uh, scan for the q values which are lower than five percent the usual cutoff okay so this is a method for um containing the errors and the number of rejections with the uh, 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 that means uh, uh, searching for the uh, false discovery rate okay so to do that there's there is there are two methods the p adjust with the p adjust function for example or with the q value from the q value package so the p-adjust function is from start package. And what does, to use that, you need to sort the p-values. They need to be uh, sorted. And then you can apply the p-adjust function on the method. For example, in, in this case, we are controlling the false discovery rate, okay? The false discovery rate, we have done the theory, so I, I won't go back to the theory, but uh, lets you find 13 genes. So we had found 10 before with that adjustment, with the, the family-wise error rate, and the, we have just found 10 genes. Okay, now the number is just, it, it's, it's growing a bit. Now it, we found 13 genes. Okay, within a cutoff of 5%. So we are not changing the value of the cutoff, but we are changing the calculation of the p values. So basically, I don't know if you remember, uh, then you can go back to the, the chapter and see that we are searching for the p value with an index, which is within a certain value. Okay, so then the proportion is now 14. So again, a little bit more, before it was 11, 0.0011, now it's 0.0014, so a little bit more. With the second method, with the Q value and the Q value package, you don't need to sort it, 
you just apply to the PVALS list. So you have the PVALS made with raw tests. Okay, and you put the, the where is it? The vector inside the, the, this Q value, okay? Uh, so again, count the, the number of p-values less than 5%, and now they are 22, so a little bit more. And again, the proportion is 0, 0, 25, so a little bit more. So now we are starting talking about something which is sounds more uh, reasonable, okay? And again, we can see that uh, on this uh, result from the QVAL, we found that 67% is the proportion of true null hypothesis. So we, we went over the, the 50%. So the, the proportion of null hypothesis in this case is 77. Here we see a representation of the p-values and the cutoff, and we see that the number of p-values within very low uh, are more than, than the other ones, which are a greater but Okay. So this is our uh, table that we know, the, the, the summary, so there is a type one error, the type two error, which is in the power. Here made uh, uh, things with guilty, not guilty, to, to make the things a little bit clearer. So we are now, uh, what we are going to do to, end up, to, to finish this thing is to hypothesize that we have seen what's happened in reality with our uh, data set. But what's happened if we do uh, an experiment? So we sample, we sample uh, with a normal dis distribution, for example. Okay, so we set up a matrix of the same size as before. So M is this. Uh, we suppose to have 500 positive, so they, they have uh, like uh, 500 cases uh, which are for sure positive. All the rest will be negatives. And then uh, we split this matrix with a little difference of two. So we now say that half of the, the, the size is uh, what we know. The other half will be plus two. So to make a difference, so th there is an increase. You can think about that we are talking about genes that are deformed, I don't know, and they have uh, like two more respect compared to the others, okay? Just to stay on the same, uh, that we are now replicating our uh, observ uh, observed data to a, um, a fake environment. So we, we replicate the same things, but we, we do fake genes, okay? Now, what if, if we use, um, we want to replicate this a thousand times to see what's happened if our matrix of uh, uh, 18,000 uh, genes is now, we do cross validation, okay? So it's like, we replicate thousand times with our genes. This is what we did it before. So we have the matrix. We have the matrix split in two. So the first uh, one part, it's as is. The other part is plus two. I say like that because uh, you, you, you go from one to 500. And then we'll stay like that. And uh, the, the other ones, all the remaining are plus two. And vice versa. Okay, so you have a part which is uh, the original and the other, the other part is plus two. Okay, so we calculate again 
the, the raw tests for all the, for the matrix, for, for our matrix. Uh, and then we do the three, uh, the, the three methods. So the Bonferroni, the P adjust and the Q value. Everything is inside uh, replication for a thousand times because uh, this is a, a, a curly bracket because each one will be replicated a thousand times. Okay, so then it releases a vector uh, with false positive, false negative method one, false positive, false negative method two, uh, and so on. This is a matrix, the result is a matrix. And this is a spec because I've just, uh, so there is a certain number of columns, 24 columns, you know? So these is, are the, the values, the number of false positive for Bonferroni, for P adjust, for Q values. As you can see, these two are similar but are different. So the, the method with Q values are always uh, slightly greater than the one calculated with P adjust. So if I do the proportion, I can see again that uh, the P adjust and the Q value for the false positive, for example, are slightly different. There is a slight, uh, why the Bonferroni is very low. Okay, so uh, the thing I was talk, uh, telling you uh, before is the, 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 the P, uh, the I, so the, the index of the P values, when we apply the, the P adjust or the Q value method is to consider all those P values which have an index within this number. So the index of the p-value, so p-value will be p1, p2, p3, p8,700. So we have 8,700 p-values, no? Okay, so we select just the p-values with the index within um, this uh, correction, which is, the same index divided by the number of genes times our cutoff. So this is again uh, a correction, the Benjamini Ochberg, for um, uh, containing the number of rejections. Okay, so as you can see, alpha is always 5%. I leave that like that, okay? And I, if I plot uh, my um, correction, so I will be from one to 8,792, whatever is the, the total. This is my correction, as you can see. And uh, the other ones are those that are that go out of the, the threshold. So just a few on the top corner here are those ones uh, that will be the, 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 the deselected ones. Okay, it's a, it's a bit low, lower. So we want to to make an adjustment, okay? So we do have like some modification. Now we found K equal to 13. The cutoff is still very low, but and the, the uh, false discovery rate with the P adjust identify a certain number of genes, which are those ones, are lower than our new cutoff. And to do, in order to do this, we set a max value, which sort the p-values lower 
cioè the, the sorted p-values need to be lower than this cutoff, new cutoff. Which is the index because we sorted. So we know that they are from the lowest to, to, to the greatest. So from the minimum to the maximum. So we can use the index, the i, the p, p1, p2, p3. We can use the index of the p value for uh, making the adjustment. It's nice, you need to think about that a bit, but so it works. And then uh, uh, you have a, a visualization to see, uh, and in fact, as you can see, this part here is the part that is not uh, what, we, what we want. So they are outliers, basically. So this way, okay. Stop sharing. <laughs> um. All right. So um, I put in the link in the chat. Sorry, in the chat the, the link to the to the episode about uh, an example of how to use the the infer package, which is part of the tidy models uh, ecosystem. Uh, you know, to get you know this kind of uh, this kind of analysis, in terms of the, you know, the the, the using using uh, frequentist uh, statistics, you know, p values, etc., and also um, uh, Julia also uses the chi square, the chi square test for independence, which is basically, uh, you know, you you group by by a matrix, okay. For example, you know, she she gets an example of. Uh, let me share. Let me share my screen really quick. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she has an example of the uh, doing the Tidy Tuesday uh, 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 Tuskegee Airmen. Uh, that was part of the Black uh, uh, Black History Month uh, initiative. And what she's trying to ascertain is, uh, you know, from the data, this kind of aircraft did that airman pilot in terms of, you know, uh, doing some statistical inference. You know, what is the probability that a certain rank corresponds to a certain type of aircraft? Okay. So in this, you know, uh, plot, you see that there are only four different pilot types, right? A liaison pilot, service pilot, single engine, and twin engine. But you have different ranks. You have second lieutenant, which is the most. Then you have first lieutenant, captain, flight officer, and so forth. So in this example, she, she chose only the single and twin engine. That's the most numerous uh, uh, pilot type. And then she also arbitrarily chose second lieutenant and flight officer. Okay, try to see that gap, right? So using the inference and you know, uh, the, the techniques that we have discussed in previous chapters, bootstrapping, for example, okay, that you generate from the same data set, generate, you know, uh, as samples. And then also she uses permutations, which is the all possible combinations that you can get from those, you know, from those types in a, you know, in, in a replicated, like the replicate, replications that uh, uh, Federica was, uh, was showing us, okay? And then, with the chi square, because this is a two by two, right? You know, you have two classes in one, you know, in, in, in one factor, and then two classes in the other. So you get a, uh, you know, a matrix, a two by two matrix, and then you can use the chi square statistic for independence. In other words, you get a table, right? How many people, okay, actually, second lieutenants are, are assigned to single engine aircraft? How many second lieutenants are assigned to uh, uh, twin engines, and so forth? So with the chi square, you compare those observed with the expected, uh, you know, uh, uh, observations that you need from, you know, uh, uh, the proportion. And what you do is that you then calculate, you know, uh, a statistic, a chi square statistic, which depending on how far is from zero, right? Because the standard is zero, right? How far is from zero? Then 
that will be the significance of that of the of that test. So in this case, uh, the test was 37.8. So that's a really, really high number. Uh, usually, uh, depending on the degrees of freedom on the chi-square, uh, anything more than, let's say more than seven or eight, for example, it gets really, you know, really significant. Words, the p-value going, is going to be really low. Uh, but you get also confidence intervals, okay? So from that point, right, from that uh, statistic, then you get 95% uh, confidence. And as you can see, most of the of the bootstrap uh, uh, samples at distribution falls within, you know, that 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 ninety five percent confidence interval. Okay. Uh, also, another method that she discusses, uh, you know, do the null distribution, which is kind of a log distribution, and then you can see that the the statistic is way down, you know, at the at the right side. So. Basically, all those numbers that you are generating from that stat fall within, you know, that statistic. Okay, giving you a high degree of confidence. Then one thing that uh, uh, she, you know, she adds, you know, to the episode is the odds ratio, and we have discussed this in logistic regression, right? Okay, when you do a logistic regression, what you're calculating is the logs of the odds ratio. So we do, you exponentiate that log, then you get the odds ratio. You know how likely is one component to you know to be present versus the other right so in this case she does the odds ratio in, in instead of the chi square okay in lieu of the sky square and now we get a little more information in terms of how likely is that one type you know one rank of, of, of pilot is going to get a type of of, of, of aircraft Right, so here, here is the you know is their conclusion. For flight officers, are more likely to be assigned to a twin engine, and second lieutenants are more likely to pilot a single aircraft. And how likely it is? Well, depending on the odds, you get the results. Okay, the odds is you know the most frequent odd is right here, right? You know that 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 big column there. So it's between two and three. Okay. There's a chance between two and three, let's say let's say two point five, you know, as an average, two point five times that a, a you know a, a flight officer uh, is going to be assigned to a to, to pilot a twin engine than the second lieutenant, which is going to assign a single engine. Okay, and these are ratios are very uh, good to communicate because it's not easy to communicate the chi square. Okay, you have to go into the statistic. The p value and all that. And some people are kind of, you know, uh, you know, that they, they, they put a barrier there. They say, ah, that's too statistical, you know, I, I don't care. <laughs> okay, they shut off. But here, when you say, okay, uh, if you increase your budget, your marketing budget in this area, you have a chance of increasing your sales by two, three, or four. Ah, now I get it. <laughs> Now I get it, okay? Because I'm 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 speaking more about about business uh, about business terms, okay? And the OS ratio uh, gives you that uh, you know that that terminology that you can translate to you know uh, business like or or, or even uh, re research uh, terms. Uh, the chi square not so much, <laughs> okay? So, uh, but but it's very very good. And infer this package has a lot of uh, of things. In fact, you know probably a meal. Uh, we'll use this, you know, to, you know, complete that chapter thirteen. Okay, if if, if somebody else doesn't, you know, <laughs> do, do it first. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. I, so yeah, that's a wrap. Yes. <laughs> we made it. We made it. Yeah. <laughs> so Jim, tell us. Uh, did, did you go to the R? You said our conference. Did you get a chance to go? I I listened into many of the sessions. Yes. Okay, but but virtually, not in person. That's right, virtually. Okay. And then uh, the uh, the Chicago um, our user group, our local group, had a debrief mm -hmm. on on some of them um, between New York our conference and uh, use our. There's, right. there's just been so much to wow. digest and, <laughs> okay. and, um, I, I, I've only sampled 
a handful of what I'd like to get through and and see what you know what could be made useful. I know that there's a lot of uh, I, I don't know you know it's, it's it's just my 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 first impression that there's a lot of it development in our studio regarding uh, production, you know production uh, tools. Okay, like for example, very uh plumber also is getting you know more attention. So that, that's good because you know if you compare the the most use ecosystems for data science, Python and, and R, uh, Python has a lot of tools for production. Okay, you know, they already have, you know, already that, that, that cover. In R, if you don't use Shiny, you're kind of, okay, what, what else can I, you know, <laughs> can I use, you know, you know to, to get things in production? And it's something that I think is, is, is getting more, you know, uh, talk, talk more in the, you know, in the R system. But uh, yeah. Uh, I, I've been receiving a couple of, uh, from our blog, of bloggers, I've received a couple of uh, presentations uh, that I have to review and see, you know, what's, uh, what's the new stuff now. Right. All right. <laughs> I, okay. I, uh, I, I will recommend this book, this, this ISLR okay. to, to, uh, yeah. to, to others on, on my team. I, mm -hmm. I, uh, there are a few kinds of personas that I work with. Um, always business people, of course, preoccupied with the business, but right. um, it's, it's not unusual to encounter um, computer science people that need statistics and um, would like to get into machine learning. Maybe they've been exposed to toys in scikit-learn, you know, a cookbook, as yeah, it the were, cookbook, yeah. and right, and I think in this arena of ML ops or applying operations, the standards for what is a good model and how does it deteriorate these 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 topics like like Bonferroni, this this has relevance. Um, right. It really does, and assessing performance. MAE, RMSE, these types, the types Metric. of metrics, the yardstick metrics, um, they, 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 they and other measurements, uh, model monitoring type questions are important. And um, there is not an easy button. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> um, but, but to their credit, I think, I think like you observed, our studio and others, they support the creation of model cards, uh, Vetiver, um, uh, some of these other tools and tidy models for guaranteeing the discipline, the workflow discipline, they're, they're very strong tools. And, and uh, ISLR in some ways tells you why they're strong tools. This, Correct. this uh, um, there are a lot of ways to make a bad model <laughs> and, and identifying sound practices and supporting sound practices and being positive about, uh, uh, you know, being able to, to arrive at a solution with a confidence interval is tremendous value. So right. I, I think we closed on a good, uh, a good, good note with this book and, and, uh, and, and, and so I'm very satisfied if, if that makes sense. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. Uh, I was talking to Federica before you came, uh, you know, line that uh, I'm looking forward for the feature engineering, uh, a book club. That there's going to be yeah. a first one that is going to supposedly it's going to happen in July, but let's see if John. Yeah, you know, not yet. Yeah. It gets his, uh, you know, gets everything set up. But I've been yeah. reading the yeah. book from yeah, my, this one. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've been starting reading, and now because I've taken the ISLR first. Okay, and delve into it. Now I can understand a little bit more what is he talking <laughs> about. <laughs> okay, because Max is very, you know, statistically, you know, sound, you know, uh, very foundational statistics, and that's his, you know, basically his, uh, you know, his, uh, his, uh, uh, yeah, you know, his background. Okay, from pharmaceuticals and all that. Uh, so uh, yeah, now, now that I'm reading carefully about, you know, starting the first chapter, you know, getting to know a little bit more about what he's talking about. And ISLR definitely is a good, it's a good foundation, a good foundation to understand what's coming next. Okay, because sometimes you know you get, 
you know, you, you start seeing things and you say, okay, you know, I, 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 th I think I understand, but maybe, you know, I'm a little bit doubtful, right? <laughs> In terms of, you know, what is he talking about really? Okay. So now, you know, I really know, you know, what, 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 you know, what he's talking about. So that, that's good, that's good. And also for interviews, this is, this is foundational, my friends. For interviews, I've seen a lot of questions in several statistics, uh, you know, machine learning, uh, et cetera. And this book is the, you know, is the one, is the one, a, a lot of people, you know, uh, source it, uh, you know, to get, to get the right answer, of course, <laughs> to get the yeah. right answer. Yeah. We, sh we should, we should start the book club. Yes. Yeah. Maybe because I don't know if, uh, if there's uh, someone to facilitate the book club, like Priyanka or some, yeah. something. Yeah. I, I think she know? was, someone else. She was um, willing. I think she was willing to do it, but uh, she was, I mean, you know, finishing, I think, I think it was the GG plot, uh, book club. Okay. So yeah. she said, you know, give, give me some time to finish and then, you know, I'll, I'll get it. But I think, I think, Should, you know, yeah. John, 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 John is in the, you know, he has it in the, in his to-do list. GG plot two will finish next, next, uh, exactly. next Monday will be uh, finished. So well, we, we uh, maybe one. you can. Maybe you can mention One that, you know, you know, if, if uh, you know, after yeah. that, you know, maybe we can move on. Because uh, let me tell you, you know, it, it's it's a good continuation. Mm -hmm. the, the, the Max book yeah. is a good continuation of the ISLR. Very good. Okay, thank you. Okay, so see you next, in the next book club. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, bye.